Shalom, 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 Israel. First, giving all praises to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. All praises due. Peace and salutations to your royal house of David. Um, I wanted to today do a uh, a little do over on the war scrolls. Um, because I went through it last time to show y'all the shape of things to come. But today I want to show you why this is such an important time. All right. I want to show you why this is such an important time. But there's some key elements in the war scrolls that you need to pay attention to. Because this here, this is nothing. I'm just gonna be honest with you. This is nothing. And you know, some of y'all out there are on the verge of cracking. Right now. Right now. Um some of y'all are on Facebook crying. Some of y'all texting me, crying. Some of y'all are messaging me, crying. Like little bitty fat babies. Yeah. Right? <laughs> hey, hey y'all look. I feel your pain. But uh, the scripture says that we should endure hardships like a good soldier. All right. Um, no soldier, no good soldier, all right, entangles himself with the affairs of his life, all right? Shit comes, shit goes. That's for you ox and aquas alike, kings and princesses. You're going to have to deal with something, man. You're going to have to. I don't, I don't like it, but I'm going to deal with it. You've got to find a way to make a way. And sometimes there's nothing you can do about the situation you're in. And when it gets to that, you got to dig in and you got to outlast it. That's, that's all you got. That's all I've ever had throughout my life. There was times that some fucked up shit will happen. You know. Um, I remember growing up, you know, and I was just on my way home one day. And I got jumped by some local motherfuckers, you know, small altercation ensued. And, uh, you know, turned out worse for me than it did for them. I'll just say that. When I got home, I remember talking to my mama. And I was like, I'm tired of the rocks. I hate it around here. So I want to leave. I don't want to live here no more. <laughs> The hood was like that. It would stress you out. And you felt trapped. Because you know, after that happened, the next day what I gotta do, I gotta get up, I gotta walk out there, I gotta pass the same people, you know, I gotta feel that fear. Is it gonna happen again? Am I finna get hurt worse this time? You know, and mama said something that stuck, you know. She said, it ain't always be like this, but it's like this now. So, we're not going anywhere. So, you're going to have to deal with it the best way you can. That was it. So, from that point on, I have to learn how to deal with shit the way it is. We all get in fucked up spots. We all get in tough positions. We all wish... You know, like David said, he said, if I had wings, I would fly away, man. But you can't. We not eagles right now, we chickens. A chicken will hop off the gate. He might fly about four or five feet, but he has his ass back on the ground. <laughs> <coughs> so, for those of y'all out there going through things, man, uh, just know that it ain't going to always be like that. And guess what? The, the, the fucking dummies that I got into the fight with 
eventually, by the end of the summer, uh, it was gone, you know. Uh, a couple of them went to jail. A couple of them moved out of the area, you know. But it was always something after that, you know. Things was cool for a while, then some shit pop off, and then you're right back in the soup. So, uh, it's always going to be something, man. But what I want to tap on today is this. Where we're headed, y'all have no idea. A lot of y'all still. That's why I want to go into these 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 uh these scrolls today and show you exactly what's getting ready to happen and why this time is of the essence. It's so important. Some of y'all that are complaining and whining and crying, you need to start taking this time to shape your mind. All right, because this is a training ground basically. You know when you join the military, right? They send you to boot camp and all that. You know what it's for? You know what the boot camp is for? It's to train you how to deal with life-threatening situations so that you don't freak out when you run into them when you reach combat. And what happens is they show you how to be a critical thinker. What happens when your gun jams? What happens when you're out of ammo? What happens when there's no food? What happens when you're surrounded? What happens if you need to avoid being captured? What happens if you do get captured? Right? All kind of things, all kind of scenarios they give you. Um, like I said, I almost joined the Army in 88, but all praises I didn't go. But I knew some people that went in, and they used to tell me different things. They had one thing that was called escape and evasion. Um, They'll wake you up early in the morning, 3, 4 o'clock, and you in your drawers and your underwear, and they send you out there in the field. They they started, you know, sending out, sending out, making loud noises and banging shit, and they make you run out of there, whatever you got. No toothbrush, no nothing. You out there in your fucking underwear, hiding, right? Because it's a simulation of you being captured and escaping your captors. If you captured, you're not going to be able to grab this and grab that and go. You got to get out there with whatever you got. And you got to forage for yourself. Now, I don't know if they do it anymore. But you out there for about a week. And uh, you got to, you know, find a way to find water, food, shelter. You know, and you can't come in until they sound the alarm. It's called escape and evasion. I don't know if they still do it. Like I said, never took part in it myself. But I've had uh, a couple of people that I used to work with that was in the Army that told me about it. Um, but it was a simulation to prepare you in case when you out there, you'll know how to deal with these things. And that's what we're dealing with right now. Okay. Right now we're dealing with training. Some of y'all complain about, I know my brother for one, he got a neighbor, uh, that is fucking with him all the time. A couple of them, you know, um, uh, 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 there's a few of y'all out there with the same problem. You're dealing with an ignorant ass motherfucker in your building. Um, you know, and you like, I can't move. I don't have the money to move. I get that. So you got to understand what the most I got you there. All right. I'm just trying to show you how to deal with difficult people, difficult situations when you can't do anything else. Because as a nation, that's what we're going to be dealing with, okay? Difficult situations, difficult-ass people, right? Where critical thinking is going to be of the essence. So, uh, if you fold here, you'll never last where we're going. Why do I say that? Well, think about it. What are some of the things ailing you? Some of y'all lonely. Some of y'all hungry. Right, so I, mean, I ain't saying we're gonna be hungry or starving. No, there's gonna be distress because we're gonna be surrounded by the whole planet that's gonna try to put us back in subjection. And I'm gonna go into that. All right, and all of us are gonna feel that stress. All of us, from the top on down. It's not the stress that kills you; it's how you handle it. So this is why I try to tell y'all, when I say stay on your square, I ain't trying to sound cool, but you got a square, man. You want to stay on it. 
Because when you slide off, you go off. You got to be able to maintain whatever discipline you have if you're going to make it. Because we are nowhere near being out. <clears throat> when this battle starts, this world is going to do everything in its power to take us down. And do you know why it's so crucial? You want to know why it's so crucial? Because the Most High Himself is going to be here. You know what happened if the most high fall, darkness wins. But we know damn well that's not going to happen. But it starts with you, right? As a man thinketh, so is he. If you can't handle a neighbor, if you can't find a way to deal with a, a rowdy neighbor or a job or whatever, if you crack just under that, you're not ready for what's coming. Some of y'all been alone for a long time, a long time. The most high knows that. All right, but if that's what kills you, I don't know how you're gonna make it. All right, this ain't no cakewalk, okay? This is real life, and I'm gonna show you, all right? We are headed for a war that's gonna last uh, 34 years. It's a long time. Now, the brotherhood, Y'all know what y'all supposed to be doing. The Brotherhood has been building, reading, studying, gelling, all right? We are y'all first and only line of defense. Now, the good thing is, Yahweh is bringing up the rear with 144,000. And even with them, even with immortality, even with spiritual powers, it's going to still be a task. Don't think it's going to be some Hollywood movie where it's all easy and, you know, you got brothers standing around with their foot on somebody's chest and beating it like they King Kong. No, 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 no. It's going to be a taxing war. It's going to be a war to end all wars, and it's going to take the most high to make sure that we're victorious. Because even with the arsenal of weapons that he's going to give us, leadership the discipline no other country on earth no other nation has fought an entire planet by itself like we're gonna have to do this is how bad they want the children the sons of light and the daughters of light back in subjection not to mention our numbers are on a very small scale 144,000 men sounds like a lot and it is until you got six billion people you fighting. Then you start to see the seriousness of it. So, that being said, everybody that's rolling with us is going to have to be at peak performance. This is why there could be no division, no arguing over stupid ass shit. Oh, you brothers are going to have to be on one accord. Oh, you aqua. You princesses are going to have to be on one accord. No jealousy. No animosity. No, she got this and I got that. No. This is life or death. And anybody, anybody that's thinking to the contrary, you're going to be identified, marked as a weak link, and cast out or executed. Did y'all see what they're doing with the banks? The banks right now are starting to put up signs, right? They're getting ready to shut this shit down, y'all. Right? <clears throat> this is why things are shaping up the way they are. They got Russian subs off the Florida coast. 90 miles between Cuba and the United States. Right? With nuclear capabilities. They just passed a draft law, okay? Men between 18 and 26 have automatically been registered for the draft. Women too, women too. So they're gonna be trying to pull from the public to go fight their war. America is teetering on destruction, right? So 
day by day, the closer we get, right? <clears throat> so, I want to take us to, uh, let's go to Romans chapter 9. Start at uh, verse 19. Romans chapter 9, verse 19. Thou wilt say unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Who hath resisted his will? Nay, but O oh man, who are you that replies against the power? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Mark that and remember it. Verse 22. What if the power willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto his glory so there's two types of people vessels of wrath and vessels of mercy the children of light which is us for the vessels of mercy he had mercy on us we're with him we love him, he loves us. Right? You got the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. The sons of darkness, the sons of Belial. Right? That being said, I set it up. Now, let's go to the War Scrolls. I want to point some things out to you. I'm going to start in the fourth paragraph. This passage is called War Scrolls, the war between the sons of darkness and the sons of light. Paragraph four says, the scroll is a mixture of apocalyptic and legal discussion. The scroll's main theological significance lies in the fact that this is a battle against the sons of uh, light and the sons of darkness although most scholars believe the story is about good and evil this in itself could allude to a struggle between the forces of life and death in the end power will intervene conquer and save his people there are parallels to the books of revelations and daniel in the scroll and it is assumed that the author borrowed from Daniel as well as other material of the day according to the date of the text creation all three books Daniel revelations and the war scroll share the common theme of life and light being victorious over evil and death all point to the fact that the outcome is already known however Listen to this. Man must participate and is thus held culpable in the outcome. Now, let me get a definition of culpable. Culpable. Deserving blame or censor as being wrong or evil or injurious. All right? Is culpable, same as guilty. Some common synonyms of culpable are blamable, blameworthy, and guilty. While all these words mean deserving reproach or punishment, culpable is weaker than guilty and is likely to connote 
malfeasance or errors of ignorance, omission, and negligence. What does it mean to be held culpable? Deserving to be blamed or considered responsible for something bad. Now, let me go back to the War Scrolls. It says, all point to the fact that the outcome is already known. However, man must participate and is thus held culpable or responsible in the outcome. See? So what it's saying is that all parties involved that are guilty of destroying this world and bringing sin in are going to be held accountable. Somebody got to bring these bastards to justice. And that's going to be us. Next paragraph. There is controversy over the date of the scroll. <clears throat> Some say that the scroll was written between 50 B.C. and 50 A.D. Because this is after the Roman conquest around 63 B.C. But before the end of Herod's reign in 4 B.C., another view is that the scroll was written after 70 A.D. and possibly as late as 135 A.D. However, most agree the date must be sometime after the Roman conquest because the author of the scroll describes the weapons and battle tactics of the Roman army. All right. So, um, that's just to put things into perspective. So, in the end of this age, there's going to be a battle between good and evil. Who have resisted his will? Well, nobody. Just because the Most High is going to intervene and make sure we get the victory doesn't mean it's going to be an, in, uh, uh, an easy victory. Scripture says that The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Okay. So, when it says the Lord is talking about the Father, will Yahweh Shai be there? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Okay. But Yahweh Shai is not held responsible. It's the Father of lights. It's not Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> you see, we know that. Yahweh Shai is Solomon in the reincarnation, right? We know that, right? So, why is that so important? Well, what did they call Yahweh Shai? They called him the Prince of Peace, right? Okay. Do you know that's what Solomon means? In Hebrew, it means peace. Now, is Yahweh Shai, uh, 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 you know, just somebody that won't fight? No, not at all. Not at all. But he knows his place. It's not his job to be the leader of the Lord's armies. That's why David preceded Solomon. All right. David preceded him. Now, in this day and age, in the time of judgment, the Prince of Peace can't be the one that wages war on the whole planet. It's going to take the man of bloodshed who was not allowed to build a temple. That was his father. All right? And in order for that to happen, he got to be alive and well today, awaiting, all right, the spiritual power to bring these things to pass. And that's where we are. So what are we supposed to be doing right now? What are we supposed to be doing? We are supposed to be mentally preparing to get out of here, but not to misconstrue our exodus as a time of peace but to understand that our exodus is going to thrust us into a time of war this planet is on a is on a a, a warrior's uh vibration now have y'all seen so do you really think that when the winds of war start blowing we're going to be omitted from that no we're going to join right in now, will there be a short period of peace for us to get together? Yeah. But after that, that's going away. And it's going to be us. And it's going to be them. All right. So, 
This is the reason why you have it so hard. This is the reason why, you know, some of y'all going without companionship. Some of y'all going without, you know, uh, 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 an easy time. Some of y'all are stressed out because he's trying to build your mind. All right. He's trying to build your mind to prepare you for what's coming. It's going to be the hardest time in human history. All right. So whatever you're dealing with, embrace it. Yeah, embrace it. Y'all think I like what, what I'm dealing with? I, I don't like it. But I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to deal with this and more. I don't give a fuck what happened. You know? I've been through disaster after disaster in my life to watch that off and to lose my damn mind. But look, you got two choices. You can let it rule you and kill you. Or you can suck it up and deal with it. That's your two choices. It sucks. I know. But those are the only two choices you got, right? Because the most high needs soldiers on the line. You don't need no cowards. You don't need no whimperers and criers and and, 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 and uh babies on their back kicking their legs. Alright? When this when the shit pops off, when it gets gangster, alright, the most high ain't gonna need no wafflers and people doubting. People complaining about this, complaining about that. No, 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 no. Okay? You better start preparing yourselves right now. Whatever comes your way, deal with it. Right? Now, uh, this is going to conclude the message for today. Uh, next one coming up, we're going to revisit the War Scrolls. All right? and get a better understanding uh, that's going to uh, exemplify what I've told you today. So y'all go ahead and soak this in, all right? And I'll see y'all on the next go-round. Giving all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, and Mashiach, Yahweh, Shai. KD out. Shalom.